Hello there, this is KL7L in Alaska. And uh, <laughs> I had lots of questions uh, been asked to me about the uh, uh, 630 meter uh, band and some of the tuning aids that are in the other videos. And I thought I'd see if I could answer a couple of the questions. But as far as information that uh, is available on the internet, I'd uh, like to point you to a few websites that, uh, that are out there. This one's by G3YXM, a Yankee X-ray mic. Uh, www.wireless.org.uk Dave's been around for a long time and providing the service on the, this website. You can uh, find circuits uh, and also a bit of history, uh, links and downloads and a uh, really good lot of stuff there. So uh, that's David, G3YXM, www.wireless.org.uk Also, some great information from... Uh, Long wave uh, home, long wave, uh, <laughs> long wave club of America, and that's uh, via uh, www.lwca.org, and that's got a message board and a lot of history and some good information about uh, what's happening and some history there. So there, that's another one, LWCA. Uh, next one is uh, 472kilohertz.org, relatively new website, uh, but uh, gaining popularity and especially in Europe, www.472kilohertz.org. And uh, finally, but by no least, is uh, John, NJD, NJD Technologies, uh, .net, and a lot of information there about 630 meters also 2200 meters daily reports uh, compiled uh, expeditiously band plan information and for those that haven't registered their sites yet uh, a link to the database so that's that one njdtechnologies.net uh, my friend w1vd.com w1vd.com again he has a lot of information to do with captures antenna systems transmitting devices receiving uh, especially the PA systems and filters just really good information here from w1vd so we're going to talk about uh, what's inside some of the devices you've been seeing on the other uh, on the other uh, videos and uh, I'm gonna get my information from uh, this gentleman and uh, mr. Taylor and that link that you can see there and you can replay this afterwards if my hand will stop shaking okay and uh, he has the uh, M0 BMU's original documentation about tuning aids for 136 and 500 kilohertz bands and the one that we're uh, interested in, uh, and it's got lots of different types here, is uh, this one here, which is in the scope match. And there's all meth all different ways of doing it using uh, uh, toroids, for, and that's particularly okay if you've got low power. Or the one that we're uh, using here and being shown on the uh, the other videos using a capacitive divider for the uh, the voltage. And a one turn primary 50 turn secondary for the current sensing so there's a couple of questions that have come up one was uh, what toroid do we use uh, in the uh, in the circuit here and what uh, what M0 uh, BMU has said was you really can use anything you like as long as it's uh, it its permeability is fairly high it's you run about 5,000 and uh, enough to make enough turns to make the impedance of the winding winding much larger than the load impedance of the operating uh, frequency which means that he, he's suggesting a mu of about 5000 which in real terms could be something like well it's a bit less than the 77 material 75 material w or potentially j materials but it will work with 43 and I've seen people even use uh, some stuff with uh, type 2 materials. So that's the circuit that we uh, were playing with and people said well what's in that box that you uh, 
you, sh you showed the other day this uh, this one here because we'd like to take a look inside well my construction skills are virtually zero but anyway I'll uh, attempt to open it up and show you uh, the uh, of what we've got and the other video here shows the, uh, the connections to the oscilloscope and how we actually connect it. Small little box here and I've been expeditious and taken the, uh, the nuts and bolts out. So we have an N-type in, N-type out. They're both uh, connected to the chassis and the, and the two uh, sensing outputs. Uh, again, BNC 50 ohms and again they're connected to earth as well. So I'm just going to open up this box here. Give me a second. Alrighty, here we go. So, a bit difficult to see, but not that bad. Right, so incoming here is an in. And you'll see that there's a lump of cab uh, coaxial cable in here. And this is a short length of LMR 400, 50 ohm coax. And you can see that the outer is connected to the chassis. And the inner of the coax is connected to the inner of the BNC here. And then it uh, runs through the center of this toroid, which is a 77 material. I think it may be 82 or 110. So that will be um, the internal diameter is something like about three quarters of an inch. And you can see I've insulated the toroid with this uh, woven uh, material that stops the windings from uh, catching on the ferrite. The ferrite at, of this type is actually a semiconductor and is partly conductive. So you don't want that to happen. You don't want the windings to short on the toroid. So I've, I've wrapped this, uh, this uh, adhesive fabric material around it, which you can again uh, get on the places like Amadon and Bitesmark. And the coax is held in the center of the of the toroid by again a big lump of uh, of this uh, material and again it's glued so it doesn't move. So the other end of the coax out here you'll notice that the outer is actually not connected to the chassis. So it's literally just through. So it's like a bit of section of through line. So the outer is connected to the input on the uh, on the outer of the braid but this end of it it's not. And so we sense the uh, uh, the uh, current this is uh, 50 turns and, uh, and then the output of that uh, of this actually is across these resistors here this is a, a three uh, 150 ohm resistors in parallel to produce 50 ohms we do a bit of current dividing here well, there is a bit of dissipation, not a lot, but we do really want to make sure that these don't get too hot and change resistances. So this, these three resistors here are uh, the 50 ohm uh, across the output of the, uh, the toric, which is, uh, which is this, uh, this one here. On the, uh, on the output side, here is the, uh, the, uh, the capacitor divider circuit. And these are Weimar uh, polypropylene capacitors. And uh, it's these here. So you've got uh, two 200s in series. Again, they're just uh, sort of doing a bit of voltage division. And then uh, a 5400. Uh, so it's be 2700 uh, capacitors in parallel to provide 5400. And those, uh, that's what. Uh, that's what this lot does, and that's uh, all connected across the uh, across the output, if you like, to provide a voltage divider. Now these, it's all glued, and as you can see, there's not a lot of current, but it's all held pretty tight with this adhesive. And you can see it's a pretty simple device. And uh, there's the uh, the output from the uh, uh, from the current side. With the, with the resistors and then this side is the uh, the voltage divider with the output of the capacitors. Now uh, a note about the uh, about the uh, capacitors uh, where are we? Do, 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 do. Where are we? Where are we? I've, no, I've lost it. Don't tell me I've lost it. I have. Oh 
one. No. Um, the capacitors. Uh, yeah, here we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. The capacitors uh, are Weimar. MKP10s or FKP10, FKP1s. And these are polypropylene pulse rated capacitors which have low dissipation factor at 137 and at uh, 630 kilohertz. And I use these uh, instead of silver mica, which would probably do just as well. And what we want to do uh, is have low dissipation factors at uh, the frequencies that we're talking about here so we want the uh, them to be derated and the absorption and how they actually work at these frequencies to be uh, to be really low so um, I think the FKP1 is uh, is used for extremely high pulse duty FKP1 and the MKP10 is the alternative and they've got different uh, they slightly change. I think the FKP start in lower capacitance values, I think, uh, whereas the MKP type starts a bit higher. But that's the reason that I use those. Now, really, you don't have to use those um, because uh, by the time uh, uh, this device uh, is in series with the uh, with the antenna, it's already gone through a low pass filter. To take out the uh, the harmonics and the nasties, but you know I like to err on the sides of uh, of conservatism, and these and these these are actually rated at uh, these capacitors are rated at uh, 1600 volts DC, so they're uh, they're really even at 137 kilohertz, they uh, they don't dissipate a lot and they stay pretty uh, static as far as the values are concerned. Anyway, so that's what's inside. Uh, as you can see, very simple. Just make sure that when you put the coax in there, that your input is grounded at one end, but the output is not. Otherwise, nothing will happen on the uh, the toroid. So this is the scope match M0 BMU. This is my version, and uh, as you can see, it's not really VHF designer communication skills, but uh, functionally works uh, very well. And uh, as far as it affecting the VSWR and insertion losses and stuff, it, uh, I can't really tell that it's in circuit. Not really, anyway. Thanks a lot. Um, we'll wish you seven threes. Greetings uh, from Alaska, KL7L.